Welcome to the Walton Pie. Today we're going to be talking about what an abelian group is. So, first we're going to recall that a group is any set of elements that has a binary relation, which we're going to just call star, which satisfies the following three properties. First, it's associative. So if you do a star b and then star c, that's the same as doing a star 2 b star c. So the order that you do them does not really matter uh, in this sense. Um, there's also going to be an identity element, which we'll call E, so that no matter what A you pick in the set, A star E is E star A, which is just A. Um, and that, so, in other words, it's acting like 1 in our standard multiplication or 0 with our standard addition. Um, and then the third property is for any A in the set, there's also an inverse element, A inverse. So A star A inverse and A inverse star A, both of those give us the identity element E. Now, an abelian group is any group that has one additional property. For any A and B in the set, A star B is the same as B star A. This property is called the commutative property, so abelian groups are also sometimes referred to as commutative groups. So the name abelian, that comes from Niels Abel pictured here. He's a famous Norwegian mathematician. He did stuff with this, so we named it after him. Uh, and that's why some people capitalize abelian. Um, I don't. So the vast majority of the groups that you've already seen are probably going to be abelian groups. So for example, the integers under addition, that's an abelian group. Uh, all real numbers under multiplication are abelian. It doesn't matter if you do 2 thirds times 7 or 7 times 2 thirds. Those give you the same results. Um, the set of 2x2 two two matrices under addition, that's an abelian group. Um, however, the set of 2x2 two two matrices under multiplication is an example of a non-abelian group. We can see that by looking at the matrices 1101 and 0111. If we multiply them in one order, we get the matrix 1211, and if we multiply them in a different order, we get 0112, which are different matrices. So that means that this set is while it is going to be a group, and that takes a little bit of work to show, this is a quick example to show that it is not an abelian group because multiplication does not commute. Now, a very important result that involves abelian groups is the fundamental theorem of finitely generated abelian groups, which is a mouthful to say, so I refer to it as photophagag. Um, it's just fun to say. Um, this tells us that every finite abelian group um, is constructed in a very specific way. So we know uh, a very large amount just from this, and it tells us that every finite abelian group is the direct sum of cyclic subgroups of prime power order. Now, if you don't know what that means, that's okay. You probably haven't gotten there in your class yet, um, but this is a very powerful result that helps quite a bit, um, and I'll be going more into this later, um, but right now, this is just a useful result to know. So I hope this video was helpful in understanding abelian groups. If it was, please consider liking and subscribing. It really helps me out. And I hope you have a great rest of your day and good luck with all of your math.